This is Common Ecchia. Today I'm talking about a hot topic. Blood clots in the leg, in your body, deep vein thromboses. Are these going up? Do statistics show that they're higher than ever? We're gonna talk about that. Look at the data. We're starting now. One thing that got me started on this topic is life insurance rates are going up at a much higher rate than they usually have been in the last couple years. The people that hedge their bets and look at the statistics and have a stake in the game are expecting us to die at a much higher rate going forward in the future due to complications and higher than expected death rates. My goal in these videos is not to get into politics, but to help people. Blood clots are a major contributor to our health issues and look at our expected lifespan in America. This is terrible. We've got to do better as a country and around the world. I have a dream that these videos can help more and more people. So that's the sole intent of this video. So hit up the likes, hit up the comments and help these videos get more reach. So blood clots are said to be one of these things. Blood clots are clumps that form when blood hardens from a liquid to a solid. They can occur in the arteries or the veins and lead to serious conditions like stroke, heart attacks, and pulmonary embolism, which could be one of the worst things. Blood clots in the lungs are called a pulmonary embolism. Me, as a foot doctor, I see this a lot. People come in with a red, hot, swollen calf muscle, and this is something called a deep vein thrombosis. There's two ways to think about blockages. You have your arteries, which bring your blood flow from your heart to your toes, and then you have veins, which bring your blood flow from your toes up to your heart. Essentially, arteriosclerosis, atherosclerosis, calcium buildup happens in your arteries, which are the big, thick, rubbery hoses that bring blood flow down to your toes. But veins are a little bit thinner, and they carry slower, less pressurized blood up to the heart. In your veins, you can get blood clots that can plug, that can go up, in your arteries, it's more thickening of the vessels, fat, atherosclerosis buildup that limits the blood flow from getting down. That's how I like to think about it, although you could have a clot in the artery as well, for sure. A deep vein thrombosis is a blood clot that develops in your veins on the way back up to the heart. And this would cause swelling, pain, redness, warmth in the leg. And this usually happens, some type of inflammation or irritation in the cells lining the vein and your blood clot attacks it and builds up and the clot gets bigger. The dangerous part is if that clot breaks away from the lining and shoots up to your lungs, when the vessels start to get small again, it can plug those vessels and stop your lungs from getting blood flow. A stroke, on the other hand, is if it plugs your brain. In your brain, if you develop a blood clot that can plug the hole, it cuts off your brain from receiving blood supply. This can cause sudden numbness in the face, arms, leg on one side, confusion, trouble speaking, understanding speech, or vision problems. Me, I don't deal as much with strokes. I deal a lot with deep vein thromboses. Diagnosing a blood clot. Specifically, a deep vein thrombosis in the leg involves the combination of clinical assessment and medical imaging. What I do when somebody comes in, you check. Is it equal on both sides? So for example, if both calves are swollen equally, it's probably not a blood clot. The odds that you have a blood clot in the exact same spot in both calf muscles is probably rare, although nothing's ever 100%. The deep vein thrombosis includes swelling, pain, redness, warmth on the affected leg. So for example, there's a test called the Homan's test where you squeeze the calf muscle and it hurts on one side, you wanna think a clot. If it doesn't hurt on the other side, probably not a clot. But at the same time, you could have strained that muscle. You could have pulled something. It's not always this easy, but usually it is for me. When somebody comes in after an injury, a surgery with high risk factors, one leg is much more swollen than the other. And what happens is you can bend that foot up and as that moves that calf, it's painful. I mean, really painful. You could squeeze that calf. You could push with your fingers on that clot area and it's really painful. Not that that's 100%, but that's what makes you want to get a venous ultrasound test at that point. And you can go to any ER. They will squeeze you in immediately because this is considered something a little bit more urgent. Or you could go to a vein clinic. They will do this for you as well. And it just looks just like this. You want to look at risk factors such as a recent surgery, prolonged immobility, that means not moving around, a history of a blood clot. So the number one risk factor of a blood clot is a history of a blood clot. That's by far number one. Cancer, certain genetic conditions, smoking, obesity, which now 
you know, over 40% of the country is technically obese. The use of birth control pills, hormone therapies. So you want to look at these risk factors. That is usually a pretty accurate way. I'll tell you with people coming in, Half of the time, it's still not a blood clot. Could have been a strain, could have been an injury, could just be a sore calf from overuse, but it could be a blood clot. The way you confirm that is through an ultrasound. This is the most common test for diagnosing a deep vein thrombosis. I work with a clinic that can do this, which is close to my clinic. They basically have the whole setup with a vascular specialist who looks at it. And then number two, in the hospital, you can go into the emergency room and they can do the test. This is an emergency, they'll get you in pretty quickly. An ultrasound uses sound waves to create images of blood flow in the veins. It's non-invasive and highly effective in identifying clots in the large veins. There are blood tests like a D-dimer test. I don't recommend this. I ordered one once in the hospital and it was sky high and it made me consider a clot, but it wasn't a clot. It, it can be high for a lot of different reasons. There's a venogram, there's a CT scan or an MRI. By far, the way to go is a venous ultrasound. Is there a home test to diagnose a deep vein thrombosis? I looked around. Currently, there's no reliable home tests. No one's working on a reliable home test. I think the liability is just way too high to even attempt anything for people to do at home. But if you suspect a DVT, it's covered. Just go to the emergency room, get a deep vein thrombosis. And I'll give you an example. One of my neighbors as well thought they were having this symptom. Right away they went, ends up they were having a pulmonary embolism, almost passed away. And I've seen this with patients as well. It's very rare, but even one of my colleagues doing a surgery, they happen to have a blood clot a couple weeks later a person passed away from a pulmonary embolism this is real and it's scary so don't take chances if you think you have a blood clot in your calf muscle so for that reason self-diagnosis and home diagnosis probably not the way to go now how do you prevent a blood clot i have a lot of great videos about the top 15 foods to prevent blood clots including one magical food I link those down below. There's medications, there's blood thinners, but for preventing and managing it, you want to look at lifestyle choices. Reversing your risk factors is the easiest thing. Regular exercise, number one, especially strength training. Then number two is cardio. Even just 15 minutes, three times a week is huge. Maintaining a healthy weight, so not being obese, that is massive. Not smoking, also very important. And reducing alcohol intake. If you do those, your risk factors essentially go to like one-tenth of what they are. Now there's medications as well. So a daily baby aspirin or a 325 milligram aspirin is possible. Some doctors recommend that. But the reality is looking at these statistics for a deep vein thrombosis on a daily aspirin, it reduces your risk maybe by 50%. So it's not like a guarantee that it's going to stop your blood clot. It's hard to have specific numbers on these two. It definitely does reduce the risk, but it's not like it guarantees that you won't have a blood clot. Reducing your risk factors is probably the better way to go, but you can also put this as another layer of help. Compression stockings. I have a lot of great videos about the best compression stocking tips, how to put them on, how to use them, assistive devices, which ones you should start off with, how to get them covered. I link that below. But yes, studies show, especially if you don't move, if you sit on the couch, if you're on a long plane ride, a compression stocking can work extremely well. Hydration. Adequate fluid intake is important, especially during long travel. Regular medical checkups. So if you have health conditions like hypertension, diabetes, heart diseases, especially like atrial fibrillation, huge risk factors for the development of a blood clot. Now the question is, I promised we'd look at that. Is the risk of blood clots rising? Nobody really wants to talk about this. And I think on YouTube, I'm not allowed to get into the details either. Um, you know, that's the state of science in today's world going into 2024 here. But the reality is COVID-19, everything associated with it, the COVID-19 virus dramatically raises the blood clotting risk factors. There's more rates of pulmonary embolisms, more rates of deep vein thrombosis. That's according to John Hopkins University. There's a serious risk of blood clots six months or later associated with COVID-19. And that's according to the British Journal of Medicine. The Johnson Johnson vaccine, for example, Yale Medicine posted an article about how it was associated with blood clots. And Singapore talked about blood vessel inflammation 
And in Singapore, they did a study about high rates of myocarditis, pericarditis, venous thrombosis were seen. They published that in an article. Germany also published a paper that there's a significant increase in venous thromboembolisms since about 2020. The CDC says the risk really is people with a deep vein thrombosis will experience a reoccurrence in almost 40% of cases within 10 years. So once you get one, you're at higher risk for more. It's important to consider that blood clots are influenced by a lot of things. I know it's popular to blame it on one thing now, but the reality is we're more obese than ever. We move around less than ever. There's a lot more stuff going on in society that we're exposed to. I won't get into that. While nobody talks about it directly because I don't think we can talk about it, life insurance rates are going up higher than ever. This is the truth teller. They look at us and they're like, hey, these human beings are having more health problems than ever, especially vascular problems. And this is high, at a higher rate than ever over the last couple of years. So we have to hedge our bets. We're rising prices disproportionately. It's not just any virus or disease. Sedentary, we're not moving. We're aging on average as a population. We have more chronic diseases such as obesity, diabetes, hypertension. There's more hormone therapies, more birth control. There's still a lot of smoking. There's still a lot of alcohol. There's more long distance travel. Tell me if I'm missing anything. These videos sometimes have more responses than a lot of these scientific articles. So it's very important that you guys comment and let me know in the comments what's helping, what's not helping, what your experiences are. That lets me help better videos and it helps other people in the chat. It's really important and I really appreciate you guys. Me personally, I think in order, the top five things you wanna do are strength train at least a few times a week. Studies show this is the single best thing you can do for all your health problems. Number two, work on your cardiovascular health. Going for walks is the single easiest thing. I have a great video on how to start a walking program at any age. Number three, you wanna make sure you're getting enough sleep. More sleep is associated with less health conditions. That's an easy one. Who doesn't wanna sleep more? I have guides on that. Number four, you wanna clean healthy diet. I have videos of my top 15 foods that are heart healthy. And then number five, you want to take some supplements if you're not able to get that diet. Let me know if I missed anything and check out our 30-day course to turn around your health. That link below.